disagreements, fallings out with friends, family members, co-workers, the ending of any kind of relationship is incredibly difficult and incredibly traumatic at times. With a narcissist, fallings out or the end of a relationship or going no contact is a whole different traumatic experience. We often have something called object consistency, which means that even if there is conflict or distance between people that you know, love and care about, you still love and care about that person. With a narcissist, they often lack in this object consistency, which means if there's any sort of conflict or disagreement or distance, they can simply stop caring, which with their lack of empathy also is why they can seemingly hurt you so much and not give a damn. So this video is going to be about the cycle of games that a narcissist can play when you do finally decide to go no contact with them. It's not easy with the trauma bond, however, it is worth it. I'm Elizabeth Shaw. Thank you very much to all the returning subscribers and your continued support. If you are new to the channel, this channel is all about the narcissist personality disorder to give you more understanding of the people you might be dealing with in your life, how to handle yourself around those people if you cannot go no contact and different methods to find what works for you to recover from narcissistic abuse. If you do find the information helpful on the channel, please do subscribe. So when it comes to the ending of a narcissistic relationship, most of us will at some point realise we have to go no contact or at least very limited contact. And the grey rock approach. Sounds easy enough, however, with the trauma bond, which is something that we develop when we live in those ongoing cycles of abuse with a with a narcissistic person. It isn't that straightforward going no contact or grey rock with a narcissist, especially with the trauma bond. However, it is possible to break that trauma bond. It is possible to go no contact. It is possible to do grey rock and it is, in, it is possible to move on to a much happier life for you. When it comes to the trauma bond, this is something we develop when we live in that continuous cycle of abuse, that continuous cycle of emotional abuse, the psychological abuse, the mind games. When the narcissist mind games moves our emotions from excitement to fear, joy to sadness, pleasure to pain, love to to hate, we are trapped in that loop, which they often do once we go no contact as well. Which is often the narcissist love bombing, devaluation, discard, hoover and repeat. Those intermittent reinforcements of play nice when they lead us to believe that we've got something right by them. When they give us that false hope of creating the ideal relationship that they sold us in the beginning and we were led to believe that they wanted the same things as us. Although it was all a game to them to get their needs met in that moment. When a narcissist puts their admiration face on, when they mirror people to sell people their hopes, their dreams, their passions, their hobbies, their ideal future, when they love bomb people, when they shower people with affection, attention and support to get that admiration that the narcissist believes they deserve. Then when they feel threatened or criticised in some way, when the narcissist themselves feels neglected or like they're about to be exposed for who they truly are, or when they're just feeling envious of somebody else and feel like trying to achieve, well, trying to exploit somebody else for what that other person has, they're envious 
face comes out. If you do something the narcissist perceives to be as better than themselves, they feel threatened and their envious face comes out and then they seek to punish people, to hurt people, to devalue people, to bring people down so that the narcissist themselves can keep control of people. Not only do they do this in the relationship, they do this after the breakdown of the relationship because with a narcissist and their sense of entitlement, they believe that they should be the master of not only their own lives but also the lives of those around them. And with their lack of empathy, they're not interested in who they hurt as long as they're meeting their own needs. They will push and poke and bait people into reactions. They will use the things that matter to you the most to get you to explain yourself and defend yourself, not only to the narcissist, but to other people. Yet the narcissist will have already got in there with their own script of how they want the story to go. They will bait you into reacting how they want you to react to match their story, to match their games, which is why it's always best to step away from their games. The best way to beat a narcissist is to no longer play because they need our reactions so that they can blame us to escape accountability for the things they actually do to us while we're the ones left questioning ourselves on what we could have done differently, what we could have done better. All these highs, lows within the dynamics of a narcissistic relationship releases lots of different chemicals within our body. Things like dopamine, when we are living those highs, we get that dopamine rush and things like cortisol when we are living in those stressful times. And a narcissist will always find a way to cause some form of stress, which also causes lots of health, health issues, also causes things like depression and anxiety, which also plays quite nicely into the narcissist's main campaign against people. Because the stories they tell people often match what's actually happening to the other person. They just miss out the part where they are the one that caused those issues within that other person. The trauma bonding itself is like weaning yourself off a very powerful drug and it can make the pain of leaving, the pain of going no contact feel worse than the pain of what is happening within that relationship, as well as people's expe expectations and obligation that society sort of conforms us into not walking away from our parents, not walking away from our children, not um, having the breakdown of a relationship, trying to keep the family household together, the society norms that are almost drilled into people from childhood also makes it incredibly difficult to walk away from narcissistic people and can leave us with lots of feelings of guilt and remorse and overthinking, ruminating of how we could have done things differently. And with a narcissist you can't do anything differently, it's who they are as a person. The only thing you can do is learn that these kinds of people exist, learn that these kinds of people think and act the way that they do, learn your boundaries, learn your values, learn your beliefs and move on to find the right people for you. With the trauma bonding it's not that easy because the pain of going no contact can feel like it's going to be worse than the pain you are suffering with contact and can keep people trapped a way longer than they ever need to be because once you do go no contact yes narcissistic people often do up their games but a better life is waiting for you it's just about making that decision when people continuously break promises to you, when they continuously raise your expectations of them to let you down, when they make you feel powerless for being yourself, these are not the kind of people you want to be around. You do have the power. No contact in grey rock 
lowering your expectations of their behaviour so that you no longer react, a learning who they are and what they do and raising your standards of behaviour you will and will not accept from other people is how you reclaim your power. No longer playing their games is how you reclaim your power. So when you do go no contact or grey rock or finally end the relationship for one last time, a narcissist is almost used to the fact that you will go back to them or if you go if you fall silent on them they know that if they fall silent on you you're going to come and chase them so they're probably thinking they're wanting me to go and chase them so they're not going to go and chase you they're going to play games with you one of those games is the smear campaign. This is where they're going to twist the story to anybody and everybody that will listen, anybody and everybody that will feed information back to you. They are going to start telling people everything that they did to you, you did to them. Or they're going to make up lies and they're going to exaggerate these lies. Or they're going to pick apart the effects that their toxic behaviour has had on you and use that against you, yet miss out what they actually did to you. And it is to get you to defend yourself, to explain yourself, to justify yourself, not only to other people, but also to the narcissist, so that they feel like they're in control, so that they get your attention so that you go to them asking them to stop and that will not work with them the more you ask them to stop the more they will do it the best thing you can do is just i'll add gray rock up here be boring be not interested and i'll also add no contact up here so with the smear campaign number one they might be telling everybody the side of the financial abuse story but they'll be telling everybody that you've sponged off them, that you've bled them dry, that you're the gold digger, that you're the leech. And you can be sat there in thousands of pounds worth of debt thanks to the narcissist. But they will be telling everybody that that is your fault and you did it to them, that you're the one with the problem. Which in one way, you do have a problem. You've just got to lose the narcissist to get rid of the problem and build your finances back up. They will be telling everybody how you were the one that controlled all the money to gain sympathy from other people and to make people question your character. The, the best thing you can do is just let life take care of it. The narcissist will repeat that same pattern of behaviour with someone else, whereas you can build yourself up and prove that that isn't you. But to yourself, just to actions rather than reactions. Number two, they will play the woe is me card to anybody and everybody that will listen. They will start claiming how that you were the one that was neglecting their needs, how you was the one that wouldn't put them first because a narcissist genuinely believes this because they feel entitled to have all the attention. So again, getting people to question your character. Three, they'll claim that you're a liar, that you don't tell the truth, that you're the one that exaggerates things. So when you try to defend yourself and justify yourself to other people, they've already got that shadow of doubt in their mind because the narcissist has already painted you out to be a liar. The narcissist will have probably told them the things that you're going to say to them because the narcissist knows what you're going to say to them because they've already told a story to bait your reaction and that reaction is what they will have already said. They're going to come and say that I've done this, that and the other because they've got it in for me and when you go and tell them what the narcissist has done, the narcissist has already got their story in. Four, they're going to claim that you are obsessed with them or that you are depressed and when it comes to things like belongings they will not give your belongings back so you've got to chase them they're going to bait you into chasing them so that they can show other people you're obsessed with them 
they're not going to say the full story they're just going to say look how many messages i've received today they're not going to give you the closure they're not going to give you anything that is rightfully yours because that will keep you chasing after them they are going to cause that intrigue so that human nature you try and find out what's happening and they can claim to all others that you're obsessed when really you're just looking for answers for closure to move forward they send you into a state of depression and then they tell everybody that you're depressed so people then judge you and not the things that the narcissist did to you and when it comes to judgment other people's opinions of you don't matter people or some people are going to judge no matter what you do so you might as well just do what is right for you with good intentions there is no wrong way or right way to live your life Five, they might start claiming you have addictions, whether that's back to the financial abuse and claiming you've got spending addictions or if you like a drop of wine in the evening or a beer on the weekend, they're going to claim that you're an alcoholic or that you're a drug user or you're a porn addict. They will find something to claim that you are addicted to something. Could be gambling, anything. They are going to, anything they can just grab hold of a little bit of information to exaggerate that information to use it against you to get people to question your reputation as a person and it's all done so that you justify yourself to the narcissist or to other people seven they might start claiming that you're lazy that you're anxious and most people do struggle with overcoming anxiety after a narcissistic relationship so in one sense this is true again they're not going to be telling people that they've led you to feel this way so this is when we've got to work on ourselves work on picking ourselves up to prove that yes we might have been anxious when we were around the narcissist but now we are no contact with the narcissist we are losing our anxieties and we are working on becoming a much happier person and finding a much happier life for ourselves. Seven, the narcissist might actually twist it to the fact that you were the one that isolated them when they were the one that isolated you. When it comes to things like special occasions, I'll have that video up here, narcissistic people, because they're not the centre of attention, the centre of attention, they're not always that fond to say the very least, of special occasions. Yet they might tell other people that they're not going to an event because you don't want to go. Even though it's the narcissist that didn't want to go, then after the relationship has ended, they can claim that you were isolating them when in reality, they were isolating you in a double win because they didn't want to go to a special occasion that wasn't about them and they could also damage your reputation in the process and your intentions and then true to narcissistic form to keep you trapped in that cycle of love hate pleasure pain to keep you questioning who you are as a person to keep you questioning who they are as a person maybe they're not that bad things like this they will then come with the hoover again it's all because they are needing the admiration they are needing the attention they feel entitled to exploit you they might feel envious that you're moving on with your life so they want to suck you back in to pull you back down to spit you back out and when they come with the hoover they can come at you with i'm sorry if only you hadn't so they're going to come at you with the false apologies that how they would have done things better but unfortunately you didn't do this so if only you do this this time it'll work out saying that they didn't lie to you they just didn't tell you because they knew you couldn't handle the truth finding a way to make you question your reactions to their actions 
making you question whether your feelings and your reactions are in the wrong when it is the narcissist actions that are in the wrong they don't want to accept responsibility for the things that they do to you so therefore they're going to try to shift the blame onto you but in a way that you will forgive them so that they can do it to you again and they can blame you for it again number two when they come with the promises of i'll change i'll never hurt you again i'll never do it again i'll go to counseling i need your help so we feel sorry for them we are given that false hope that if we just hold out a little bit longer they will deliver that person that they sold themselves to be when they actually sold an illusion of who they are to meet a need of their own number three they'll come back saying how much they miss you how they've made a big mistake how they realize now that you are the love of their life and this is a form of flattery and a form of love bombing they might start sending a lot of gifts or sending photos asking you to remember the good times which is when you've got to remember the bad times because a narcissist can shower you with some good times to get you hooked within that relationship again it's all to meet a need of their own Fourth, they might come with the offer of commitment, a marriage, a family, a home. These again will be things that the narcissist possibly sold to you in the beginning of the relationship, but they sold them to you as if they wanted those very things too. Not only did they want the very things you wanted, they wanted those very things with you. They somehow apologize in a way that i'm sorry but if only you hadn't i wouldn't so you blame yourself for not achieving these things and think that if you work a little bit harder then you'll get those things that the narcissist they are breadcrumbing you into coming back into the relationship so that they can let you down again five the guilt trip they can come at you with how ill they are or how ill somebody else is or how you're breaking up the family how will the children feel how will your mother feel how will your father feel and they're only guilt tripping not because they're concerned about how anybody else will feel they're concerned about getting their own needs met so they want to lull you into that false sense of security that they care and they only care about themselves. Whatever a narcissist is doing, whatever game they're showing you with one hand, they're usually playing a game behind your back with another. They're trying to raise your expectations and lower your standards. And this is when you've got to reclaim your power by lowering your expectations of them so that you no longer react to them learning your values and beliefs and raising your standards so that they can no longer come at you take you down so that you know your reason why you are creating this boundary know your reason why you are going no contact and stick with that reason you need that radical acceptance that this is who they are as a person in order for someone to change they have to be aware of who they are as a person and they have to accept responsibility for their own behavior not to meet a need of their own in order to gain something from somebody else but to change their own behavior for them cells which they are not going to do they're only going to change their behavior so that they can exploit somebody else try to get positively addicted to something else keeping yourself busy in a way that is good for you things like starting new exercise classes exercise yoga meditation reading books starting new courses looking at new career paths helping out in the community starting new routines with your family getting positively addicted 
to something else, even self-care so that you can be at your best to give your best. And a sense of humour can really, really help you through this. When you learn the patterns of behaviour, yes, some it is devastating, some it is extremely hurtful, more with the narcissist, most of it is. But when you can step away from their games and find your sense of humour within their games, it no longer pulls out those negative emotions, it no, but no longer pulls out the sadness. Yes, sometimes we do need to process those emotions, we do need to grieve, we do need to cry. We also need to laugh for ourselves and safely move away from their games. Any games you noticed from a narcissist when you finally made the move to go no contact with them, please do drop that into the comments and anything that you did that helped you no longer react to their games, please also add that into the comments. I shall add in the description the other video on the smear campaign which explains more and the other video on the hoover which explains more and the video on trauma bonding that explains in more detail. Thank you very much for listening and I hope everyone has a brilliant day. Bye!